वेलकम टू स्टार्ट अप सर्कल आई एम वर्षा मेघानी Dijantara is India's first aerospace company that's developing an in-orbit device that will track and monitor debris in space. With countries and companies worldwide launching space exploration missions, the problem of space junk has become huge. NASA estimates that there are 6000 tons of junk materials in Earth's low orbit at present. Anirudh Sharma, the co-founder and CEO of Dijantara, says that the market to manage this debris is potentially worth millions of dollars. We caught up with him to find out more. Take a look. Anirudh, thanks for joining us. Um, so, so you're all of twenty-two years old. You run what is India's first space surveillance company. Uh, you have partnerships with companies in South America and Europe. Um, but the journey really started in your dorm room about three years ago. um tell us about that and and how that led to the idea of uh, digiantara firstly i'll start with uh, how how this journey started so back then while we were at our uh, universities i was doing my uh, computer science engineering but then i was very much interested in um, aerospace or aeronautics and especially uh, uh, you know to work in space domains so at that point of time one of my colleague uh, who is today our co-founder uh, was in rv college of engineering bangalore and he was doing his aerospace engineering and he was leading uh, a student uh, satellite team in his university so that's when we had a brief conversation of what that student satellite team is all about he told me that it's been in here they started this it's it's a part of uh, isro's uh, student satellite launch program and i thought why not i start the same in my university but that's how it all started we, uh, we just formed a small uh, club in our university or a student run club uh, to to uh, to work on space um, related activities or build a nano satellite as a part of the same program so initially uh, you know it's difficult for university management to trust us because we are just students and space is capital intensive so uh, we participated in a conference which was organized by uh, isro in chandigarh and we won an award there so post that award the uh, things changed for us and then university uh, put in their efforts and uh, you know money in in our projects that we are doing so i was leading the student satellite team as a mission director and it was my responsibility to ha- uh, build a connection between industry and our team mm-hmm. so that's when i wrote a lot of cold emails saying uh, you know can you support our student satellite team here in our university to a lot of space companies agencies across the globe and in which i got a few replies back so uh, so in which one of the company was from latin america there was a requirement from this latin american company to uh, uh, fabricate a structure or a satellite uh, component here in india or i mean it was because of the cost aspect because india is cheaper in terms of labor and stuff so we told them that yes we can do this as a student project so we took that up and then we fabricated here in india and so yeah. that was where yeah. things started for us and uh, this company helped us to uh, uh, you know take our student satellite team commercial because that's when uh, uh, we got a contract and then we had to provide them with an invoice so just to provide an invoice we had to start a company so that's how digantra started they gave you a 1000 dollar check which you then used as seed capital for digantra um, yes then- yes right. and then later since we had this exposure we started participating in national and international uh, conferences and events in space mm-hmm. industry one of the event was in uh, uh, bremen germany in 2018 we participated and then we got to know a lot of things about uh, space that is you know space traffic management is an issue space sustainability so all the entire conference was towards space traffic management space debris space jam so that's mm-hmm. when we started ruminating around uh, this aspects of space traffic management and the same latin american company that we were working with he introduced us to the problem statement because he also told us that his satellite was lost due to a debris hit and since he was one of our mentors while uh, for our student satellite team us and them worked together on developing an idea and that's how an idea generated uh, which we are doing today called a space surveillance platform uh, with i mean with a uh, constellation of nano satellites which will be launching to track and map space junk So, so the problem of uh, space debris monitoring that that you all are tackling, uh, give us a sense of how big the problem is uh, and how 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 big the market is uh, to solve for it. I'll I'll start from the problem statement. Sure. Uh, so, this um, 
space race started in 1957 when uh, Russia launched its first satellite Sputnik. Mm-hmm. Post that, there are 70 odd countries today having capabilities to build and launch satellites, and also few countries to build rockets and launch them. Uh, you can see the increasing uh, launches that is happening from past one decade. There are a lot of launches happening. Mm-hmm. So due to which every launch uh, has some residue or it leaves a residue there in space, which then becomes a debris. And then there is a chain reaction that happens in space. And that's how space junk has been uh, formed today. Mm-hmm. So space, yeah. people thought space is in, an infinite resource, but it's not infinite. It's pretty much finite like any other industry, like airspace. So mm-hmm. just to give you with an analogy, so in the early days of aviation, um, human lives were at stake because airplanes were meeting with uh, collisions or mid-air collisions. So post that, people identified this problem and they started the air traffic management solutions. But in space, this was not the case. People started putting a lot of satellites, 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 and today the sustainability of space has become really low. And, uh, today there is an era of uh, miniaturization where people are sending nanosatellites or CubeSats. For such nanosatellites and CubeSats, even a small one centimeter object is still a debris and it can cause a catastrophe. Sometimes it can collapse the entire satellite or destroy the entire satellite. Mm -hmm. So that's what is the problem that we are tackling today. So presently there are only uh, ground-based systems that um, capture this debris in space. Um, And you all are appending that and creating something that will actually track and monitor objects um, in space from space itself. Um, yes, uh, ground-based systems are hopefully inadequate in terms of tracking space debris less than 10 centimeter in size. Okay. Like I mentioned, even a 5 centimeter size debris can cause a catastrophe to a nanosatellite because of the uh, miniaturization factor. So as right. far as the market is concerned, this market did not exist a few years ago. Mm-hmm. The trend in this market started changing and we know ourselves because we started in this industry in 2018 and in 2020 we see a lot of changes in this industry people started giving importance to space debris or space sustainability today mm-hmm. so the market dynamics in this industry has changed there are millions of dollars of satellites at stake in the orbit so there is a potential market for debris tracking and mitigation services I would say. so the solution that you've developed the space debris monitoring uh, system uh, consists of a hardware solution as well as a software solution um, so tell us, you know, given the problem statement, how did you go about, um, you know, developing this uh, this system? So the solution that we are developing is a combination of a hardware and a software solution, mm-hmm. where uh, uh, the hardware has a laser module in it with a sensor, and we track space objects using laser ranging methods. Mm-hmm. And then the data that we get back to the ground has to be processed, and then we have to predict the future course of the tracked object, right? So that's where the stuff, uh, the software stack comes in and then we predict and build a visualization platform of all the objects that we have tracked in space and form a catalog. At what stage of development are you all, uh, you know, with, with the product uh, and, you know, when do you all plan to hit the market with it? So what happens in space is that the first thing that you have to do is a technology demonstration mission. Or mm-hmm. You have to launch one satellite with such a module and then, uh, so to be in the business terms, it's nothing but an MVP. You have to launch an MVP to space and then check uh, uh, what kind of debris it is tracking and then calibre the sensors if there is any marginal error. So as, as far as the development is concerned, uh, uh, we have completed few prototypes that we have developed for this in-orbit space debris monitor. And we are in terms of assembling this prototype inside a nanosatellite. And then we'll be launching this nanosatellite uh, in uh, Q4 of 2021. Uh, where we test this technology in space, then uh, get the data back from the nano satellite that we send and calibrate our sensors accordingly if there is a marginal error. And how we are trying to do this is that we'll be sending our satellite to an orbit where the debris is already tracked by the ground-based systems. These ground-based systems track objects that are greater than 10 centimeter in size. We already have a catalog for that. So our first satellite goes to an orbit where the debris is already tracked. Mm-hmm. and we track the same debris again, then check the calibration of our sensors, and if there is any error, we correct it. And so what kind of customers will use uh, your your product? So I would say business segments can be categorized into three. Mm-hmm. The first thing is uh, uh, defense and government. For defense, SSA or space situational awareness data acts as an enabler for offensive and defensive purpose. Defense agencies will be interested in procuring such data 
to understand the risk in the orbit or the risks that are there for their assets. Okay. Yeah, the yeah, second yeah. kind of yeah. customers are uh, insurance companies. So insurance companies, uh, you know, provide insurance uh, for satellites. So say you want to launch a satellite for an orbit of 800 kilometers, the insurance company is interested in understanding the risk of that 800 kilometer orbit before even they give you the insurance for your satellite. Sure. Right. So that's where insurance companies comes in and they would like to buy this data. And the third uh, business segment is commercial space segment, where commercial space companies are interested in understanding the risk around their uh, assets because people are launching constellation of satellites right now. Mm -hmm. So mission operations also comes at a cost. So yeah. we are helping them reduce the mission operation cost by 70% by providing them such data and help them avoid uh, collisions with any object in space. So you look to sell this data to them on a regular basis? It's, it's more or less uh, a subscription uh, model that we'll be following. Right where we'll be selling this data on a subscription uh, basis for their satellites, like per satellite, uh, X dollars per satellite per month. You recently signed a partnership with a billion dollar space flight company called Telespazio. Um, tell us how that came about. They themselves are a space mission operation company, a very, I mean, very old, uh, 60 year olds come, I mean, 60 year old company. So uh, Telespazio is working on developing a software called Enable, mm -hmm. which is, uh, a, a, which is a software for uh, satellite operators or they provide operation as a service to the end uh, users. Okay. For their software, they are in need of such space situational awareness data as an integration to their software. So that's where uh, they approached us and then we had a discussion and took this forward. And it is really important to have an early adapter like Telespazio before even you launch your product. That gives us a kind of confidence that, okay, product that we are building is on track. The government recently opened up the space sector for private companies. Uh, that must have given you all a huge boost as well. So before, um, I mean, it was in a gray area in India, I would say, because uh, we didn't know what regulations are. If a private company in India could launch and operate satellites, there was no regulations or government support at place. Mm -hmm. Now that ISRO mm -hmm. is opened and government has opened uh, uh, privatization of uh, space sector, it is really helpful for all of our uh, uh, young Indian space companies uh, to grow and build a very good ecosystem here in India and then be able to uh, uh, commercialize the products worldwide. And how difficult is it, uh, you know, uh, running a space company in India because, uh, you know, you know, understanding is limited. Uh, of course, you all have been incubated um, at IIC Bangalore. Um, you all have received a grant of 25 lakhs. Uh, but how difficult is it convincing investors and people about uh, you know what you all are doing and, and the efficacy of it? So it was pretty difficult before, I would say, but things are changing drastically uh, uh, with the support of the government as well. So, uh, you know, when we started, we didn't have so much support from the government. Mm -hmm. And later we were incubated by uh, Society of Innovation and Development at IISC, Indian Institute of Science, which gave us a lot of boost in terms of interacting with the government officials and also this gives a confidence to the investors also mm -hmm. and the second fact is that we started in 2018 the companies which started from the range of 2017 and 2019 i would say are lucky companies uh, because uh, com companies like us already had a platform which companies like bellatrix had set up before Right. So it was difficult for them to, uh, you know, convince investors and create awareness. So the, by the time we came into existence, uh, there was a platform which was already set by companies like Bellatrix and Astrom, due to which, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, always build upon the same uh, uh, base that they have uh, made for us. Yeah. So now uh, investors all are also interested in uh, investing in space companies. Are you in talks with investors to raise money? So we are in talks with both uh, uh, VCs and uh, angel investors right now. And all of our fundraising activities are, uh, you know, supported by our mentors at Indian Institute of Science. Okay. So, so they connect us to the uh, VCs and angel network whom we talk and then, uh, you know, take things forward. So that being said, right now, uh, we have uh, soft commitments of uh, around uh, 300 to $400,000 right now. We are raising $1 million as our uh, seed round uh, investment in which we'll be developing our satellite and launching our first MVP to space. 
And so, um, uh, in the immediate future and uh, over the long term, what are what are your plans? And about the immediate future, uh, we'll be launching our first uh, nano satellite in Q4 of 2021, and post that, we'll be launching uh, a constellation of uh, uh, satellites in form of batches. Uh, deployed across three years. By 2023, we aim to become um, a space-based surveillance company, providing a full capacity, or I would say, uh, uh, yeah, full capacity uh, constellation-based services to the uh, satellite operators.